Today, when you look out in any direction as far as the laws of physics allow us to see, the limits of what's observable extend to truly astronomical distances. At the farthest reaches of our observable limits, the most ancient light we can see was emitted a whopping 13.8 billion years ago, corresponding to the hot Big Bang itself. Today, after traveling through our expanding universe, that light finally arrives here on Earth, carrying information about objects that are presently located some 46.1 billion light years away. It's only due to the expanding fabric of space that the most ancient light we can see corresponds to distances that exceed 13.8 billion light years. As time continues to march forward, we'll be able to see even farther away, as light that's still on its way eventually reaches us. Nonetheless, at any given time, there's a limit to how far away we can see, a limit to the observable universe. This also means that if we went back to any point in the distant past, our universe would also have a finite, quantifiable size, smaller than it is today, dependent on how much time has passed since the hot Big Bang. But what if we went all the way back, back to the very beginning, and the very first moment of the hot Big Bang itself? Surprisingly, it doesn't give us a singularity, where the universe reaches infinite densities and temperatures at an infinitesimal size. Instead, there's a limit, a smallest possible size that the universe could have had. Here's why that limit exists, and how we can figure out the minimum size of the early universe. In our universe, if we want to know anything about either what it will do in the future or what it was doing in the past, we need to understand the rules and laws that govern it. For the universe, and in particular for how the fabric of the universe evolves with time, those rules are set forth by our theory of gravity, Einstein's general relativity. If you can tell Einstein's equations what all the different types of matter and energy in the universe are, and how they move and evolve over time, those same equations can tell you how space will curve and evolve, including by expanding or contracting, at any point in the past or future. The universe we have is not only governed by Einstein's general relativity, but a special case of it, where the universe is both if the universe is the same in terms of matter and energy in all places and in all directions, then we can derive a universe that must either expand or contract. This solution was first derived by Alexander Friedman and is known as the friedman lemaitre robertson walker FLRW, metric, any equations that govern the expansion, or contraction, are known as the Friedman equations. If you can measure or determine what's in your universe, then these equations will tell you all about your universe's properties in both the past and the future.